Are you using events to power your sales and marketing? Well, making sure Eventbrite syncs with your CRM is one of the most important pieces of keeping that data long-term. So how to sync Eventbrite with HubSpot, with Zapier, and then celebrate with a Slack notification? That's what I'm gonna show you here in this video. Let's dive in. So first of all, we need to set up our Eventbrite event. And so I'm gonna assume that you've done that. I'm gonna walk through the real brief details here just to make sure you know what is behind the scenes. We're also gonna set this event up as an in-person event. You can do it for virtual events as well. When you do put them on Eventbrite, that does help with visibility in your local market. But you've got these pieces over here where you need to build the event page. You need to add your tickets. You can decide if they're gonna cost money or if they're going to be free and then ultimately publish that page uh, so that people can register. Now jumping over into Zapier, we need to set up our Zap and this is gonna be a multi-step Zap. But the first thing we're going to do is make sure that once someone registers for the event in Eventbrite, they get added into this Zap. So that's actually what triggers the Zap. So in this case, it's going to ask you to make sure that you get the Eventbrite synced. We're gonna set up a new attendee registration. And it's a little confusing because if you use the organic language on Eventbrite, it says reserve a spot. But again, we're looking for event registrations. And you'll notice there's a lot of other things here, but we're gonna do registration. So you can power this. Uh, there's also other triggers if you're doing events. If you wanna have a very specific message go to someone once they've been checked in. You can use that too. So many options here, but we're just going to focus on this one. So let's go ahead and link it to the account. And then our trigger again, since we're using that for a new attendee, we're going to select the organization. That is the one that I set up. Our event status is live. So it's already published. And then in this case, we selected the event. So when you pull this down, you can also search for past events, um, current or, or draft as well. So we're going to continue and we've already tested this. So that is good to go. Now, the next step is going to be making sure that we create or opt a contact in HubSpot. So if you already have this contact for this person in HubSpot, you may want to actually hit create or update contact. If your HubSpot's brand new, you could probably get away with just create contact. So when you use this, what it does is it looks for the contact email to use as the ID so we don't actually have duplicate records. So this contact email is going to be what we use. And again, it's pulling this information from the attendee registration in that first zap right? So we've got all this information here. You're going to select the email. And then as you go down, depending on how your HubSpot is set up, these fields here are pulled from all of the properties that you have available in HubSpot for that contact record. So that's what we're creating or updating. Now, let's say you have a piece in your order form, which would be over here in the edit pieces of the event under order options. And if I click on order form, It'll actually bring up what we have on the screen here, and that's going to be name and email are required, but you can add additional questions here. So let's say you have a field over in HubSpot that denotes maybe level of comfort with that particular topic. So in this case, the event is about LinkedIn. What is your current comfort level as it comes to LinkedIn marketing? And they could actually then choose a drop down. It would need to match what they have in HubSpot again, but then you could use that to segment those folks or even send a specific drip to them at the event or prior to the event based on their level of uh, comfort. So that would be one option. Now, if you go back to this zap, we're just going to pull the first name and we're gonna pull the last name and that's gonna be as simple as we do here for this demonstration. Each time you do wanna test this zap, so we did test it already, so we're gonna continue. And then what happens here when we actually get someone registered in Eventbrite, it actually takes the event properties and puts them into that record. So we have a start date and an end date and a start time and an end time. However, when that shows up in Zapier, it's all this one big string. So we have to use a format start time uh, formatter by Zapier here as a step. And the event is gonna be a date and time. The action is going to format this specific input, which is this event start local. This is a field that came from our attendee registration here. So if you're stuck, this is what you go looking for. Look for that start local. Again, if you use command F and look for it, that's how you would find that. You want this format to be an hour and a time specificity. And then this is what we actually need because this is going to power the meeting activity on a HubSpot record. So we're going to click continue. And then we did test this step already. You can see that the output here is 9 a.m. And then here, same sort of thing, we need to do it for the end time. And the reason we do that is because when we get to this next step, so we're gonna click on create meeting activity, which is driven by create and meeting engagement in HubSpot. So create engagement, and then we're gonna I'll go to the account and then the action. So here in the action, you can see that the engagement, there's a lot of different options. If you don't wanna create a meeting, you could create a task, you could log a call. But again, when I'm thinking about logging workshop registrations, people then it would be a meeting with us. Or if I wanted to track like long-term engagement with someone, you might actually create a custom activity type using a custom object. We're not gonna cover that in this video, but that'd be an option too. So we're gonna click on continue and our meeting title is workshop registration, our event name, and then here's where that input 
or here's where the outputs of those previous zaps do show up. So we're gonna click continue. And we did test the step, so we're gonna continue as well. And then lastly, I wanna be able to send a Slack message to our team that says, woohoo, we have a new work workshop registrant. It's a nice, easy way to kind of see that detail within your environment where you work. So we connect our, our Slack. We created a channel called workshops where this is gonna post. And then the message is just, yay. And then we're using that data as it came through Eventbrite to put that into a Slack message. So let's go ahead and say we're gonna send it as a bot. Our, our bot's name is event bot. We can name it something fun if you wanted to. And then we have an icon as well. So if we continued and we actually tested that step, the step uh, will, will look like this. And there we go. That's going to be the Slack message that pops up. So let's go ahead and run through that one more time. Let's start from the top and we're going to uh, run through what this would look like. So step one, the attendee is registered in their event in Eventbrite. That's gonna be set up on the Eventbrite side. Step two, we're gonna create or update that contact in HubSpot, format the date and time so it can display properly and then log a meeting on their record. So here we've got an example of this was created as a result of the Eventbrite. You can see it was created as an offline source due to integration. If we look at this a little bit further, you can also see that this offline source tells us that it was created through Zapier. So if you have Marketing Pro and you wanna use workflows to actually then add another attribute to this specific record saying it came from this Eventbrite, you can do that as well. Again, keep in mind Eventbrite also has a custom integration, but this is some, an option if you wanna explore that. Now, if we go back to the record, you'll see that we have this meeting registration logged on the record. And if I just click on meetings itself, it'll just show me, again, I tested this twice, but it does show up here under their contact records. So you can actually report on that information, which is awesome. And then lastly, we have that Slack notification to send a message and then again, in, that's what it looks like. So that's it. It's a couple of steps, but as easy as getting that Eventbrite set up with HubSpot and then ultimately sharing that with your team in Slack. For more tips, tricks, and how to use, hit that subscribe button. And if you want some other tips on HubSpot, drop us a comment below and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover.